Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and in this video I'm going to talk about FOOT1 and FOOT2 genes, their function and uh, the difference between these two genes and their products. And um, first of all, I want briefly remind you how a bio gene works, how FOOT1 works and then we are going to talk about FOOT2 gene. So I will go over uh, some of the information that uh, you probably already seen in my uh, few last uploads. Take a look, for example, uh, at this red blood cell. Here is a bio gene, and many of you probably know that red blood cells doesn't have a nucleus and doesn't have uh, chromosomes, genes, but very early uh, at the development stage of the red blood cell in bone marrow they do have nucleus chromosomes and genes and on the chromosome number nine so here is a chromosome number nine uh, we can find a bio gene on the long arm of this chromosome and uh, basically this gene can produce three alleles allele a allele b and allele o Allele A and B are functioning enzymes, produce functioning enzymes, and uh, allele O would be just non-functional enzyme. There is stop codon due to frame uh, shift uh, mutation, and uh, this uh, enzyme O just is not produced. Sometimes people call it zero, so ABO, uh, AB zero. O means zero. Uh, so a bio gene uh, basically can uh, produce two variants of the functioning enzyme, which is going to add uh, terminal sugar to this substrate. And substrate would be made of four sugars. If uh, you have allele B, uh, then to the substrate, uh, this enzyme would add galactose and this is going to be antigen B. If you have allele A, then terminal sugar which would be added would be an acetyl galactosamine and you would have blood group A. If on one chromosome you would have allele A and allele B on the other chromosome, then you would have two types of sugars, terminal sugars added to the substrate and on the red blood cells you would have antigens A and B and you would be of the blood group AB. So, f so far this is uh, something that you can uh, find in your textbooks and now let's talk about uh, what is the function of the uh, FOOT1 gene and basically uh, FOOT1 gene makes uh, this uh, precursor for a bio gene this precursor and this gene uh, produce enzyme which would add this sugar here foot one would use these three sugars as substrate and would add this sugar which is fucose and then allele uh, A and B can use this substrate to add another sugar. If, uh, for example, we would have a FOOT1 gene which is going to be non-functional, then again we are deployed, so that means we should have two non-functional alleles on each uh, chromosome. By the way, uh, this FOOT1 gene uh, can be found on the chromosome number 19 also on the long arm and if we would have two non-functional genes then this sugar wouldn't be added and also even if we would have a normally functioning gene with uh, this going to be allele A and B still those we would have enzyme in the red blood cell that can add these terminal uh, sugars but 
these enzymes wouldn't be able to recognize this substrate without Foucault's and these terminal sugars wouldn't be added. So we say that FOOD1 gene is epistatic to a bio gene. If it is, uh, has two uh, non-functional alleles, then no matter if uh, a bio gene would produce functioning uh, enzymes, still uh, the, those enzymes wouldn't be able to function, to perform the function of adding terminal uh, sugars. So we call FOOD1 gene epistatic to ABO. And FOOD1 gene can be uh, of the two variants. It can be dominant, we call this H allele, and recessive. And of course, two alleles can produce three genotypes in organism, which is capital H, capital H, capital H, small h, and small h, small h. If someone has two recessive alleles, such person sometimes mistakenly can be defined as uh, belonging to the blood group O because he is not going to have no antigen A, no antigen B. But he also actually is not going to belong to the blood group O because blood group O means four sugars. But such a person would have three sugars and instead in his uh, blood serum having just two antibodies A and B, such a person also would have antibody H or antibody O. Such a person uh, we would call belonging to the blood group Bombay and he is going to be universal donor of the red blood cells but his blood serum cannot be given to any of other blood groups because he is going to have antibodies A, antibodies B and antibodies H or O. So even those people who belong to the blood group O cannot get serum from uh, s someone who belong to the Bombay blood group. And at the same time, those people who belong to the Bombay blood group would be universal recipient of the blood serum, but uh, can get uh, red blood cells only from those people who also would be uh, Bombay blood group. Now let's return to foot to gene and let's talk about the difference between foot one. Uh, both these genes can be found on the chromosome number 19 very close to each other and by the name uh, you can see that uh, function of these two genes are very similar but take a look at these two pictures uh, if foot one gene would be a uh, first step in making these sugars which uh, would be uh, antigens found on the surface of the red blood cells for two gene would make a soluble version of these sugars uh, and would make this uh, precursor for a bio gene but uh, this is going to be soluble so uh, we would find it in the, uh, for example, mucus and take a look now, red blood cells we can find in the blood circulatory system. So uh, also antigens A and B uh, we would find in the blood on the surface of the red blood cells. But this soluble version of the antigens A and B which would be result of the food 2 gene we can find in the secretions of the uh, glands and in the mucus layer of many organs. And by the way, uh, for example, 
just small intestine. This is interesting fact. Is about uh, its surface is about 200 times greater than surface of our skin. Can you imagine 200 times? So what is the importance of this uh, soluble version of antigens A and B? And take a look uh, again. Uh, this is uh, just sugars. Sugars that uh, can be in soluble form found in the mucus. Also, the sugars uh, would be a source of the energy for many uh, commensal bacteria and many people are secretors, but still many people are non-secretors because uh, it have been found that these sugars also can be attachment points for some viruses. So for humans it is beneficial to be uh, secretors and non-secretors too in different situations. Again, this food to gene can produce also two alleles. One allele is SE, so capital S and small e, and another allele would be small s and small e. And these two alleles can produce three genotypes. Uh, capital S E, capital S E, capital S E, small s e and small s e, small s e. Again, if uh, you have at least one functioning uh, secretion allele or uh, functioning food to gene, then you would secrete these antigens in the mucus and uh, other body fluids which produced by uh, secretory glands. But if you would have two defective alleles, you won't secrete these antigens. And how many people would be non-secretors? About 20%. This is a very large number. That means that it is actually, in many cases, beneficial to be non-secretor. But uh, also, it is beneficial to be secretor uh, again, uh, depends on different situations. Variation in our genes, beneficial for our uh, survival. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.